everyone, Therese here. Welcome to this week's Karma Cards. I have a question for you. Can you feel it? Can you feel this energy? Because it is intense. <laughs> it's intense energy, and it, but it's wonderful at the same time. I think I showed you last week on the Karma Cards that curtain of light that was coming in with the Schumann resonance. Well, that thing went, I think, for almost 72 hours, if I'm remembering it right. And I got up to 96 hertz, but it had several high spikes in it. And these high spikes are this incoming streaming of energy that the earth is receiving. So it's not so much that that energy represents what's coming in, but what has already come in and being released to us through the earth's electromagnetic field. And people feel that. But at the same time, as we were having those, we were also having a bunch of solar flares. We got some pretty strong M-class solar flares, where, which are the moderate ones, but we still feel those. So at the same time as the earth is spiking us all this energy that it's absorbed, the sun is sending us more energy and we got like this double dose energy happening. So a lot of people are feeling it. A lot of people feel tired. Hi. Hi. I feel tired. A lot of people are saying they just feel wiped out. It kind of just, it takes a lot to process this energy. And I remember the Arcturians had said um, at the spirit circles, when they come through, when I channel them, they had talked about like, you're going to feel this. We're dosing you higher now. So welcome to your up-leveled dose of ascension energy. And with that, inside this amazing dose of ascension energy, we also have a planetary conjunction that only happens every 14 years. So right inside this window of being highly dosed, we have a very, I would say, auspicious connection between Jupiter and Uranus. They're, they're exactly conjunct on April 20th in the sign of Taurus. So what does that mean? Well, Taurus is the first earth sign in the Zodiac. So we know it has something to do with literally the physical plane. Jupiter is considered a benefic planet. It's expansive. It's the planet of good fortune, good luck, expanded energy, higher energy. Jupiter, I believe, is connected to Zeus. Somebody correct me on that if I don't have it right. But I believe in mythology Jupiter is connected to Zeus. Zeus is the new king, right? He took the place of um, Kronos, who is Saturn. So Jupiter is sort of the positive ruler of our solar system. Very expansive, very good energy, always bringing positive, op optimistic, expansive change. And that planet's pairing up with what I like to call the plot twist planet, which is Uranus. And it's like, you're never going to see what's coming. Now, Uranus is interesting because Uranus is the ruler of the sign Aquarius, which is the age that we're in. So Uranus promises to bring something you've never seen before. Um, when these two get together, we get breakthrough energy. So get ready for some like out of the blue ahas, maybe out of the blue good news, maybe out of the blue changes in our world, like um, inventions or information coming forward, like something clicks into place and it's very beneficial and it hasn't happened since 2010 and we're getting it right now inside this ascension gateway as the arcturians call it uh mixed with the end of mercury retrograde and a full moon coming up <laughs> the full moon will be here on april 23rd so it's sort of sandwiched in between all these other really interesting astrological events is we're getting this really cool conjunction and a lot of astrologers are super excited about it because it always heralds something that is highly beneficial, not just for an individual, but for humanity. Because again, um, Uranus is one of those outer planets. So it affects multiple people. Aquarius is the sign of the humanitarian. Jupiter is very expansive. It also 
Uh, it's considered more of a personal planet, but it's right there on the edge where it really does have an expansive effect. So it affects more than just you. So we're going to see something come forward that I think is going to be almost revelatory feeling. And again, this might not happen like overnight, might not happen on the day, but it sets forward that, that thing into motion that these things can change the world. And because it's with Jupiter, it's for the better. Uranus though, when I call it the plot twist planet, you don't know what it's going to look like. And so don't, it, it's hard to, it's hard to put your finger on it or say, this is the kind of change you can expect to see because it's like a wild card. Um, and sometimes the things that we need don't always look the way we want them to look, right? We, if we want peace, as an example, it doesn't always look like a soft spiritual leader. It can look like Thor's hammer coming down, but the end result is peace. So that's, I know that's a weird metaphor, but hopefully you're getting <laughs> what I'm putting out there. A lot of energy at this time. And we've got the full moon in Scorpio coming up on Tuesday, April 23rd. And there will be a spirit circle that day. So if you'd like to join us for some deep release work, because as you know, full moons are all about letting go of what's getting in the way. And with a Scorpio full moon, we're definitely doing some healing work energy. It's kind of a helping to shed or get rid of the blockages that are in the way of us fully receiving these higher energies because they're coming in. And usually when we're having symptoms or ascension related symptoms, like, like you, I get achy joints, you get sleepy, you feel um, maybe really keyed up and anxious for no reason. Maybe you're breaking down and crying and you don't know why it's because you're processing out in some way, the energies that are still hanging around with you that can't be there. So once we get all of that mostly sloughed out, I think that the ascension starts to feel different. Maybe we still feel tired because we're still processing heavy energy, but we don't have as many of the symptoms like headaches or flu-like symptoms that accompany it because we're clearing it out. So full moons are always a good time to do some deeper clearing, some extra clearing. And this one is going to go deep because Scorpio likes to go deep and it's going to focus on deeper levels of healing, things that are ready to come up to the surface so you can fully release them. If you'd like to join us for that, here's the link and I'm going to put it in the description below and you can sign up and join us for the spirit circle where I'll take you through the healing process. And then we do personal psychic Q and a at the end. So you get to talk to me and I get to use my team to help you answer questions that you have. I'd love to see you there if that feels like it's in alignment with you. So with all this energy, naturally, I'm asking my team, what's up? Like, what, <laughs> what's the message here? What are you trying to tell us? How long are we in this process? In fact, a good friend of mine had asked me this morning to ask my team, <laughs> how long are we in this process for? And she was really cute. She was like, I want one of those, you know, um, um, barometer, a thermometer, a barometer, you know, when, when you have like a um, charity fundraising or something and you, you move the red up the thermometer to see how far you've gotten uh, in the process. She wants a, like a dipstick <laughs> of where we're at. And so I got a really interesting response from my team and they talked about the crowning process that we're in an initiation process right now. So we're through this ascension gateway, the energy's increasing and we're in an initiation process. And they said, it's a lot like they, they love to compare it to giving birth because we are giving birth to an, a completely new way of being a, a new way of being on this planet that we have not seen before. Um, whether we're on this literal planet or we go to like a higher dimensional planet, whatever it is, we haven't seen it before. We're in the birthing process. We've been in the canal and we're in contractions right now. Like contractions have started people, uh, and we're getting close to crowning. And they like to use the word crowning because it has a double meaning. 
because there's the crowning of the baby, but there's also the crowning of a sovereign entity, which is you. It's like you getting your crown back and you going through this birthing process, us collectively together going through the birthing process. And so they wanted to let us know that that's where we're at. We're in contractions right now, which means contractions can look really different and they can take some time. My God, I do not want this to be a long labor. You know, I feel like we all feel that way. So please, 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 can this be a reasonable labor? I still get deep in my heart that we go through this whole process in 2024. Um, and I would like, I would like to manifest that. So if you're with me on that, let's confirm it together that we can, we consent to moving up to the next level of going through the solar flash ascension portal and going to new earth in 2024. Who's with me, right? Give me a thumbs up in the comments. Let's manifest this shit now because <laughs> I'm tired of waiting. Oh my gosh. I'm tired of waiting, but I'm here for the journey. So let's do it. But yeah, help me out. Give me a thumbs up in the comments give me some power. Let's put some power in this. You and I together, let's collectively join forces and say 2024. It happens now. We are ready because we're in contractions now. Uh, so contractions, not a fun energy, right? It's uh, painful and can feel like suffering and make you want to back out of, of uh, going through this process. And anyone who has had to go through labor contractions, you know, you know that there is that point in which you've, you're not sure you made the best choice. <laughs> you, you question your choices at that point. Like, why did I do this? <laughs> why am I here? And that's, you know, that's kind of the pinnacle. What's really interesting is it's hardest right before the greatest shift the greatest shift you could possibly experience, right? So um, for me and for many moms out there, giving birth is such a great payoff. The, the, the being able to see your child and hold them in your arms and have that new relationship and, and see what you were, you were able to help assist in growing human life. Like all of it hits you in such a way that the payoff is so worth the pain. And that's what my team would have us focus on at this time. Because if we focus too heavily on the contractions and on how painful it's going to get as we get up to this great event, um, it will make us question, <laughs> why am I doing this? Why do I have to be here? This doesn't look so great. I'm really having second doubt, you know, I'm having second thoughts about doing this. And I'm starting to wonder if it, there is a payoff, right? That's very common. And if you go through that, that's okay. It's part of the process actually. So there's, there's no need to like try to avoid those feelings. They're actually part of the process. But if we can remember what we're, what we're here for, the mission isn't to go through pain. The mission isn't to break something down. The mission is to birth an entirely higher frequency, new way of being. And it's the payoff is so worth it. I want you to just think about this. It's going to be so worth it that you would be willing to do it again. That's how good, that is how good it's going to be. And so while we're in this process of contraction, it is helpful to us to focus on the payoff, even though we've not been there, you've been there on the astral plane many times. You go there when you sleep, you go there when they put you to sleep for a nap so that they can work on your system. You are, you've been there. There are many times where when you just even closing your eyes and really tuning into your heart, you go there then. It's just, we haven't had the physical experience of it. And so it's easy for doubt to creep in when things get hard and tell you that maybe this isn't going to work. And listen, we go through that in so many different ways, whether it's building a business, whether it's being in 
a relationship, whether it's going to school or learning something new, we all go through this threshold where we're, it's part of the creative process where you're just not sure this is going to work. You know, like it just, it doesn't seem like it's clicking yet. And when you get that to that space, it's easy to kind of be like, I don't know, I think I might bail. We're in a process where just like in birth, you can't bail. It's too, <laughs> too late. You know, like you're already here. It's already happening. That's where we're at. So their, their gentle reminder to us is to understand that this is the birthing process. And not only that is the initiation of you fully expressing your sovereignty. You are a sovereign being. You were born one. It's never changed. You've always been one. But expression of your sovereignty might be the first time. It might be the first time that you've allowed yourself to fully embody that. That's what's coming. This higher energy is coming. And we are asked to think about the payoff. When you are going through medical school, you're not thinking about how hard medical school is. You're thinking about the payoff. When you are putting yourself out there for a job that you really want, maybe it's just slightly slightly higher than you've ever reached before. You're not thinking about how you might think a little about how hard it is to reach for it, but you're thinking about when I get this, it's so worth it. I'm willing to put myself out there. I'm willing to be in an uncomfortable space to get this amazing outcome. And we're asked to focus on that. And I know that, you know, with spirituality, we're often talked, we're often told, you know, don't, um, dwell on outcomes, but that doesn't mean we can't have a focus of like what's coming and, and use it as a North star. You're allowed to have a North star, have a North star, but understand that the journey is just as important as what you're going to. But when you need that reassurance, reach for your North star, focus on the payoff because the payoff is so, so worth it. And with that, let's look at this week's karma card. And if you're new to karma cards, let me quickly show you how these work. I have three decks here, planets, signs of the zodiac, and the houses of astrology. And I've already asked my team, what is the message for this week? And I've got two sets of answers, a set in red, which are action related, and a set in blue, which are outcome related. And the way that you play is you tune in with your beautiful intuition and feel what is the guidance you most desire right now? Are you looking for action related guidance or are you looking for outcomes? And of course you can always choose both. And while you're choosing, let me tell you the timing for this reading. This is for April 17th through the 24th and the flavor of this reading. We've got mercury. Okay. Mercury's in retrograde right now. It's going to stay there until the 26th of April. So we're almost done. And then we just have to work through the shadow period, which is usually about a week after. So really, by the time May starts, we'll be out of Mercury retrograde. But Mercury is all about analyzing. It's about thinking about it. It's contemplation. It's also about communicating what you're learning. In the sign of Capricorn. So this is talking about focusing on your goals, <laughs> focusing on your leadership, focusing on what you want to see. This is very much a card that talks about What's the outcome I'm looking for? And then back again is the fifth house, which is one of my favorites. It's the fun house. Fifth house reminds us that part of the process is play. Part of the process is to engage with it like you would if you were a child. How would you engage with life as a child? How did you engage with life as a child? Right? That's where we're being asked to draw from as we move forward this week. So for those who are choosing action, your spiritual action at this time is to communicate your goals with the trust of a child. So again, fully believing your goals and communicate it. So very similar to what they were talking about. Focus on that end result. We're, we're not tunnel visioning about the end result, but we want to focus on it. You want to think about the payoff, what is coming, what, whatever you're working towards this week, you should consider the payoff. 
but also engage in the process. But with the trust of a child is really important. It means I absolutely believe it. You, if I believe I'm going to be a ballerina, I'm going to be a ballerina. That's how a child thinks. They're not questioning whether or not they actually have the muscle tone to do it or if they're the right size. Blah, blah, blah. Nope, that's what they're going to be. And that's the kind of obstinate trust and belief we need to bring to this process. Mental action at this time, analyze the day-to-day -day reality of fun, romance, and making art. A lot of people think that the creative process is silly and light, and it's actually probably one of the like deepest processes you can go through because it is how life operates itself. We are always in the middle of the creative process. We were created. We are in the process right now. All life is created through creativity. So even if you don't identify as a creative person, you are by the very nature of your being a creative person. Fun romance and making art seem light, right? They seem kind of surfacey, light and easy. They have a lot of hidden depth to them. And it's asking you to consider what does it look like showing up to that day to day? Because it's sure it's easy to be romantic one night a week, once in a while, but that's not really bringing your relationship into depth. What does it look like day to day? to engage with romance? What does it look like day to day to engage with fun? A lot of times we associate fun with events, like I'm going on vacation, we're going to Disneyland, that's fun, right? We see it as this isolated event and they're saying, what about day to day? What are you engaging with? Are you engaging with fun on a day to day basis? Making art on a day to day basis, romance, these types of things, right? They're asking you to consider what does it look like when you actively engage with it every day? And you're going to find that it morphs. It's not the same. It's not, you don't go to Disneyland every day, but can you have fun every day? Yes. And it's looking for and inviting opportunities for these things to happen for you daily. Now, what does romance look like daily? If you're not in a romantic relationship, it looks like, how do I romance myself? How do I have a romantic relationship with myself. And I, I mean, like, how do I not just take care of myself, but nurture myself, but lavish myself with the kind of affection I would give to a partner that I love. And many of us don't engage with ourselves in that way. There, there are people who do, and there are people who are quite good at it. And others of us are like, I don't, that's not my relationship to myself, but what would it look like if it was? And what would it look like if you were doing that every day, just a little at a time, right? It's sometimes it's dabbing perfume on yourself and just taking a moment to smell it and enjoy it and be like, mm, I smell good. Or There's all sorts of ways. That's just one I'm thinking of. How do we engage with fun, romance, making art again for those of you who are like i'm not an artist yes but that doesn't mean you can't make art daily and it doesn't always mean i'm sitting down and drawing something or i'm playing a guitar or i'm having an interpretive dance although those definitely can be in there how do we engage with it daily and if this is something we haven't contemplated apparently this is the week to do it so let's do it sounds like a fun task i'm in how about you physical action let your mind tell you how to use the most business-like way and do it dramatically. This is an interesting one. <laughs> when I ask my team, what are you talking about? They're like return of investment. So that's the most business-like way. What is my return going to be? If I put faith in myself, what is the return of investment going to be? If I put faith and belief and trust that we are really heading towards a magnificent, beautiful event that will change the course of our lives, what's the return of investment on that? We know that energy in, energy out, meaning what I put in is what I get out of it. So if I put trash thoughts, negative thoughts in, I'm going to get trash and negativity back. So we're looking at the return of investment and then in a dramatic way of, and I feel like with a dramatic way is like, again, as a child would, I'm all in. 
this is happening. I fully believe it. I am all in, right? If we bring that energy to whatever it is we're working on this week, and also, again, sort of looking at that bigger global event of like, where are we moving to um, on a spiritual level, on the metaphysical level, on the physical level, we are going to undergo this incredible change, right? So we can look at it at any level you're looking at it at. They're asking you to think about the return of investment. What are you going to put in? Because you know that if you put in something of quality, you're going to get a good return of investment. I mean, people know this about things like um, investing in their business. If you are really skimpy and you're trying to sit and the whole idea is to try and save money and cut corners, what are you going to get back? You're going to get you know, skimpy and cut corners back. And so we, this period of time is asking us to really check in with the mind, with the quality of thinking that we are bringing to the situations at hand. Are we putting in something that's going to give us a good return or are we being stingy in our thinking? Like, am I not willing to have fun because I think fun is wasteful? Well, then no wonder everything feels so hard and heavy because I constantly choose hard and heavy, right? Am I unwilling to see myself in a romantic life? Like, what does it look like to be in love with yourself? Am I unwilling to do that? Well, I'm not going to know what that feeling is because I'm not investing in it, right? So it's, they're, they're asking us to look at the quality of our thoughts because the quality of our thoughts is dictating what we're putting in and what we're putting in is what we're going to get out. All right, so now let's look at outcomes for Mercury and Capricorn in the fifth house or fun house. Spiritual outcome at this time, the awareness of dedication to achieve the power of love. I think what they're trying to say is that we're getting better at better at managing our minds, which is something that we have to learn. Guys, that's part of why we're here. We're here for experience. We're here to learn. We're here to, to assist with this amazing planetary upgrade, but we have to learn our powers. And unfortunately, or fortunately, depends on, I guess, how you look at it. We weren't pre-taught. Like we don't have the, the lesson plan of how do I use my mind in the most efficient way to create the outcomes I desire? We're not instantly taught that at a young age. Some of us never learn it and others of us learn it later on. And if we're lucky, if, if you get to be so lucky, there's somebody in your life who is encouraging you in this way. But for most of us, it takes a while. And usually we've learned backwards, right? We, we think the outside world affects us rather than understanding our effect on our outer world. So I think we're getting better and better at understanding how important it is to manage our mind. For those who work with me, who are clients of mine, you guys are, you always know my team's like mm, perspective shift. And some of you love it. And some of you are like, stop asking me to change my mind. But that's where the power, <laughs> that's where the power is. And I feel like we're getting it. This week's going to be helpful. Maybe that uh, Jupiter Uranus conjunction will really help us shift. I would love that. But the power of your mind, it's really, again, think about return of investment. It's what you put in is what comes out. So if we're putting in these thoughts of like, um, fun is frivolous and meaningless and, you know, art, you know, like, being nurturing and soft with yourself isn't going to get you anywhere. Then you see you're programming in hard stuff. You're like, I want this to be hard. And then you go, why am I suffering? Why is this so hard? Because part of what we're putting in is this really rigid thought that's going to return rigidity to us. So I think we're getting it. We're getting it. We're getting it. And I want to encourage you. You're getting it. We don't have to be perfect in this process, but we're getting more and more aware of what's going on upstairs because if you're not liking what you're seeing it always starts here mental outcome at this time many thoughts about or from focusing on investments gambles and other games again this <laughs> this um, this energy of uh gaming fun lightness, joy, like using that type of energy. A lot of people see that as risky behavior. They think that that's not what produces outcomes, but everything 
good that you've experienced people who really experience success they're always in love they're always enjoying the process it seems to be the secret ingredient if you want if you want to create something in your life that's amazing it would behoove you to enjoy and love the process and even have fun with it and so there's a real power in that also i always mention this whenever this one comes up but courage literally means an open heart and, and anytime your heart is open it feels risky because you feel the most exposed you're the most authentic you are and the most vulnerable at the same time you're actually i see it as you're actually in quite a powerful place but it can feel very open and very um vulnerable and so that feels like a risk and people oftentimes miscalculate that as foolish now there are definitely risks in life we can take which are foolish i would not recommend you know driving your car and trying to text at the same time that doesn't end well right that's a risk that's not worth taking but opening yourself up to what would this experience be like if i actually chose to have fun with it what rather than being afraid of it what if i chose to enjoy it and even be amused by the process i find myself in what what would shift there is it going to feel like a risk yeah does it have a great payoff yes and you can trust your discernment on this you can trust that you are discerning especially when you are tapping into your heart when you're taking a moment to consider hopefully you're closing your eyes and you're connecting in with your heart space and it'll feel so exhilarating and scary at the same time but that kind of risk where you're opening yourself up is just actually putting you in a more powerfully magnetic state so that is something for us to really consider as we're working about with this because not everything that feels like a gamble or a risk is bad we just have to use our power of discernment to know whether or not this is us being impulsive and flighty or careless, which I think you'll know, or if it's you being vulnerable, open and expressive. Physical outcome at this time, many words resulting from the rules imposed by your creations. Okay, so again, this goes back to the return of investment. So the return of investment is what you've created i think that part of this is there's going to be this aha awareness about oh my gosh i really have been limiting myself here i really have been playing this kind of tight or rigid and holding on to things so dearly and, and taking it maybe a little too seriously and i'm getting now why i got sort of a stunted creation or it came out smaller than i wanted i didn't take the risk on this one i really did play it safe right we're gonna see that and then it's that the words are an aha it might come out in the form of you need to journal it or you got to go talk to somebody right you got to like express this self-awareness that's coming through about how you may have unintentionally limited yourself while trying to do the right thing because i do believe that even if we've made a stunted creation that wasn't the intention usually our intentions are we're trying to make the best choice that we can see and yet if what motivates that choice is fear that's usually what stunts it and if we're motivated by courage again that means an open heart or love or you know a deep sense of joy anticipation excitement like good energy we're going to create something more expansive and so i think we're gonna again stuff drops in this week where we seem to kind of like it clicks and we get it and we're like finally finally i can see how i've been working on this and and how i i didn't even know i was sort of undercutting myself all along the process and now i i am seeing that there's an opportunity for me to be more expansive it's going to feel a little scary but i'm going to choose to trust myself and i'm going to start by connecting with myself and going is this the right action to take and if so how can i open my heart more to this experience and see what comes through with that so i hope you have a beautiful week there's a lot of expansive energy a lot of positive energy to look forward 
we are in that mercury retrograde so things might feel a little wonky but that's okay it's going to be ending soon and we're going to start really moving again in that forward directive energy and with that i'm sending you so much love Mwah.